Jack. Yes. How you doing, man? I, I think it's time to revisit the electric car phenomenon. Yes. I think yeah. it's time for the whole world to visit the electric car. <laughs> the whole world. The whole world. The entire world. The whole world is watching. Yep. So let's let's remember a few things. All right. Back when electricity was discovered and harnessed, and uh, there were some early ideas about electric cars, but they they didn't catch on relative to the combustion engine. And there was some politics. There was right. some, you know, this sort of thing. Right. So, Exxon, Exxon was invented. <laughs> Exxon. You know, yeah. once they invented Exxon, it was just like, death to you, electric. <laughs> no, it was just. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the point is, right now, electric vehicles are making a comeback. The, the stigma that electric vehicles had for so long was that they were underpowered or they looked right. ugly or, or no, right. no one's getting a date. If right. you're picking somebody up in an exactly. in, in electric vehicle. And so uh, so that, that stereotype has been broken and busted open. And right. so now you have many manufacturers who are, who are putting forth their- Sexy <laughs> electric cars. Electric cars. And so, so there's still some challenges. For example, they still run on batteries. Right. Now, battery is like, okay, that was invented in the- you know, 19th century, the chemistry was a little different. Wow. But if you want to look at sort of the last holdout of a century old technology within a modern vehicle, it's the battery. Wow. Battery technology. Never thought of it that way, but you're absolutely right. It is, and it is really kind of an antiquated way of looking about, thinking about powering things. Correct. And, but it's nonetheless a, a, an effective means of storing energy. Right. An effective means of storing energy that you, but you have to recharge it, but you can carry that around with you. Okay. Right. Here's right. the problem if you have pure solar panels on your car. Okay. Well, what happens if a cloud goes in front of the sun? <laughs> okay. Right. You could, you could picture this where all right. these cars are approaching an intersection and then like, a cloud goes in front of the sun, then they all just stop. Uh, everybody just slows down. And, and then the, until the cloud goes away and then they keep right. going. And right? they weren't being polite. <laughs> Nobody was being polite. <laughs> so so there are sources of energy that are in the moment that you that are not effective for cars because you want to be able to store it and use it on command. This mm -hmm. is what made gasoline, so oil-derived products, so effective because they have a lot of chemical energy built into their molecules. You carry that with you. You load up over here, you carry it with you, you use it up, and then you reload at, at another destination. So the portability of energy is everything, all right? right? So Chuck, it all comes down to portability of your source of energy. Okay. That, that's what it is. It, it comes down to that. Okay, so here's an interesting fact, all right? Most of our transportation industry runs on gasoline or diesel, okay? Right. And so we all know where to get that. You get that at a gas station. Mm -hmm. And we all know where the oil comes from. It's from the Middle East or from a, an Alaska pipeline or right. from the Venezuela, wherever. And Wherever so, there's trouble in the world. <laughs> there's trouble in the world. If there's trouble in the world, you know we got some oil there. You know we got some oil there. You know what I mean? Anybody dropping bombs, got to be some oil there. <laughs> so there's... <laughs> So the so oil is geopolitically significant. Absolutely, yeah. Because not everybody in the world has their own oil well where they just draw their own energy from Earth's crust. Right. Okay? So somebody's going to have it, and they're going to have more of it than you do. And now you have to negotiate for it, buy it. And are they your friend? Or are they your enemy? Or are they your frenemy? All right? So right. all of this matters so that you can drive your car to work each morning. So the point is... The geopolitics of access to oil influences mm -hmm. things like your price of gas at the pump, right. right? And so that's weird when you think about it. So so what happens when you use an electric car? And yes, you do have this 100-year-old technology, the battery, but it's all we have for now. And the batteries are getting better than they were, but they're still batteries. But fine. All right. I've got a battery, mm -hmm. and, I, and I use it all up, and I have to charge it. Right. So what is a battery? There's like all these electrons in one half of the battery and they have energy there. And by tapping that energy, the electrons move to the other side of the battery and then your battery's dead. Okay. 
In a non-rechargeable battery, you then throw it away. In a rechargeable battery, you reverse the current and the electrons move upstream. Think of them like salmon swimming upstream. And they go right. upstream and they lodge themselves on the opposite plate again. That's, that's right. basically a battery. But first they mate with another electron and die. <laughs> okay. No, the, so that's where the salmon analogy breaks down. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. okay, I'm sorry. Okay. sorry. <laughs> and a bear is ready to eat them on the, on exactly. the top. Exactly. <laughs> Just swipes them out of the water. <laughs> <laughs> Poor salmon. Be nice. Uh, so, um, oh, a quick point there, a point we've made before, but it's worth saying in this moment. If you have a freshly dead battery, okay, and then you put in the reverse charge, those right. electrons can lodge anywhere on that opposite plate that they happen to land. Okay. They got a zillion places to go. Right. Okay, to choose from. And then they land there. But when you're half charged, uh -huh. only half the spaces are left. When you're 90% charged, there's only 10% of the spaces left. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So the electrons have a harder time finding that remaining spot. It's like musical chairs for electrons. Yeah, <laughs> or, or a big parking lot around a football stadium. Uh -huh. If you're the first one there, park anywhere. Right, that's true, yeah. And, and you park within seconds. Right. But if you come later, there's a spot for you, but you gotta find it. It and could take, you a, a, take yeah. you a half hour to park, okay? Yes. So as the charge gets higher and higher on your battery, the time it takes to charge the rest of it continues to grow. Right. Okay. Right. So just something to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. So right. your battery is not screwing with you people. When it's, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's not. It's not just like you know breaking down on you in the last ten percent. Which right, is right. It's not. It takes it's not ever. It's not messing with you in the last 10, 20 percent. Hey guys, I thought this would be a perfect time to take a break from the explainer and introduce you to the all-electric Chevrolet Bolt EUV. Talk about electric vehicles. This is the everyday electric vehicle for everyday people, which means it's everyday awesome. Come on, check it out. Just take a look at the power flow screen that shows you in real time how the energy is flowing to and from the high voltage battery. And don't get me started on how much I never wanna to go to the gas station again. Imagine being able to charge your car ahead of time, whether it's while you're at work, having dinner, I mean, come on, sign me up. And if that's not enough, what if your electric vehicle could do the driving for you? That's right, the Chevy Bolt EUV has a hands-free driving assistance feature called Super Cruise, ensuring that your commute will never be the same again. Hey, thanks to Chevrolet for letting me check out their really cool EUV. And right now, I have to take a nice, quiet ride. See what I did there? Now I want to recharge my battery. Mm -hmm. It's electric. So I plug it into the wall. Oh, well, wait a minute. Well, where does the wall get its energy? From your regional power station. Right. Let's go there. So you walk down to the power station. Hi, hey, folks, how are you making power today? Well, oh, well, we nice, got these. It's, it's nice to see you have such a cordial relationship with <laughs> With your electric company. Because <laughs> if I walk down, I'm going to be like, what the hell is up with this bill? <laughs> now, I ain't even been home for two weeks. <laughs> I haven't been home for two weeks, and I, this bill is exactly the same. I haven't run the dishwasher, the washing Not, machine. <laughs> right. What's up, people? What kind of clip joint are you running? <laughs> and Chuck, I agree. I go on vacation, come back, it don't make no damn bit no of difference. No difference. <laughs> no difference. Okay. So, pretending I have a relationship with the power company manager. All right? right. So, I say, how are you making energy today? And they show me the coal cars that drive up, dump coal into the hopper, and they burn the coal. Bad right. news. So that's that. That was a fossil fuels because coal comes from long dead plants, and this is carbon that had been sequestered for millions of years. Right. It's now getting released into the atmosphere. So, Chuck, here's the catch with the coal cars that are dumping coal into the hoppers that are burning it in the electric company. So that electric company just inv I'm, I'm making this up, but you get a sense of this. That electric company just invest invested in solar panels. Okay. They have a solar panel array out back, all right? What else do they have? They have, they're tapped into a hydroelectric plant. Nice. All right, uh, it's up the road a, a bit, okay? 
Cool. Um, and, and what else might they have? Maybe a little uh, offshore wind? Off, no, maybe there are some winds, okay? Some wind farms. So what's happening now is their energy profile that they generate can come from any combination of these sources. If you wanted to run your car off of wind energy, you couldn't. Or solar, you couldn't. Or, or, or hydroelectric, you couldn't. But the electric company can, and they can send it to your wall socket. Right. So the engine of your car doesn't have to be able to run off of 12 different ingredients. It doesn't ha- your car doesn't have to be so designed as to be able to have to have solar panels and wind turbines. And it. it doesn't have to have any of that. It just has to have a power plug. Right. It plugs into the wall. And then you can put pressure on the power companies to generate energies in whatever green way you dictate or want or desire. Excellent. And that way, your car ends up being equipped to go forward in a green-turning society. Sweet. Whereas your, your internal combustion engine car, even though they still far outnumber electric cars, and they're still in many ways cheaper to run and operate, um, the fact is, if you're going to be future-proofing your driving, you, you'd want to think about this as an option. Right, right. But the cool thing is that electric cars have kind of proven to be better in many respects. I mean, oh, oh, yeah. I mean, so I was just talking about the basic physics of it. But okay. yeah, first of all, last I checked, there's 40,000 40, electric charging stations across the country, right? right. 40,000 of them. But in addition, if the whole car is electric, and, and they're modern and new, they're, of course, on the internet. They get, You can talk to it from the internet. Everything right. is connected. Everything. It's like if you reinvented the car today, it's how you would design a car. And that's how all the great car manufacturers are putting their cars on the road right now, the, their electric cars. Yeah. So, so I look forward to what that future is. Plus, an electric car in principle, can talk to another electric car. Absolutely. Just think about that. So That's you say, great. excuse me, I want to change lanes now. Could you give me a little space? And right. the cars to my right uh, separate. And unless unless it's from Boston. No. <laughs> if it's from Boston, it'd be like, ah, screw you. I'm in a wicked hurry. <laughs> stop, stop. <laughs> electric call, cars with yeah. with accent with regional with, accents with regional accents. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> you know, I ninety five. It's like, hey, hey, I'm driving over here. <laughs> ah, screw you. I'm in a wicked hurry. <laughs> you and your car. <laughs> Boston meets Brooklyn on yeah, Interstate ninety five. <laughs> <laughs> so so anyhow, so electric cars is the future. It really is. And uh, by the way, the chemicals that manufacture an electric car, those right. are not all green. You know, I mean, you still got to make the car. So, but these are first steps. And I, I applaud them all because it means society is responding to, the, to the, the cry of danger that scientists have been put, have put forth for decades now regarding yeah. the, our role in the warming of this planet. Literally cat- decades. Decades. And the catastrophic consequences that would unfold as a result. At one last point before we <clears throat> land this plane or park this car. <laughs> right. Electric cars have many fewer moving parts. Right. And every time you have two marts, parts moving against one another, there's against each other, tear. They, there's wear and tear and they create friction. And friction is the great black hole of power of the energy that you put into your car. Oh, okay. I never thought of it that way. I, but you're right. If you got to get the, you got to get the energies from somewhere. That heat has to come from somewhere. Why do you think your engine gets hot? Right, right. You say, oh, because it's working. No, it's because there's energy you it's wanted a, to use to go forward right. that it couldn't use that way. So it's heating up the engine. It's heating up the engine. That's wow, it's 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 an inefficient delivery of power. Correct, Co- correct. It says ever, however efficient it is. It's less efficient than an electric car, which has many fewer moving parts. Right. And so it doesn't get as hot. It does, things can get hot, but not from the friction of the right. Of right. parts. And also, of course, with fewer moving parts, there's fewer stuff to break. Right. I mean, think about how many moving parts are in an internal combustion engine car. Oh, my gosh. Like, you know, countless thousands of parts. And so with an electric car, fewer parts, 
uh, fewer maintenance, uh, lower maintenance bills, or, or fewer maintenance bills, less frequent. And so, so it's got a lot going for it. Electric yeah. cars. Now let's talk about the flux capacitor. Nope, that has to be a whole other show. Oh. Because I'm working on one myself, and you'll have to <laughs> wait for that. <laughs> All right, there you All go, right. Chuck. That's cool, man. Everything you ever never needed to know, almost everything about uh, electric cars. I can't wait to get one. All right, this has been Star Talk Explainer. All about electric vehicles, or some about electric vehicles. Keep looking up. <laughs>